Welcome to the dance floor of the 1977 classic, Saturday Night Fever, a film that transcended its disco beats to become a cultural touchstone. Perhaps you recall the first time you witnessed the iconic moves of Tony Manero, played by John Travolta, lighting up the screen with his electrifying dance sequences. Or maybe there are lesser known tidbits about the movie that pique your curiosity. Before we dive into the lesser known facts, consider your most cherished memory or personal experience tied to Saturday Night Fever. Was it a night out with friends emulating the disco fever, or did the film soundtrack serve as the backdrop to a significant moment in your life? Share your stories and memories in the comments below, we'd love to hear them. Now, onto the intriguing details about Saturday Night Fever. Did you know that the film's roots lie in a New York Magazine article about the city's disco scene? Or that John Travolta's now famous white suit almost didn't make it into the film? These nuggets add layers to the film's legacy, making it more than just a dance-centric narrative. Your turn. What are your thoughts on Saturday Night Fever? Any hidden gems or personal anecdotes you'd like to share? We're all ears. The making of the 1977 movie Saturday Night Fever had its share of interesting behind-the-scenes moments. One notable incident occurred during filming in Brooklyn when trouble brewed in the rough neighborhoods. A firebomb was thrown at the 2001 disco, where scenes were being shot. Fortunately, there were no injuries or serious damage. Production manager John Nicolella attributed the incident to a neighborhood issue, suggesting that hiring some local kids could resolve the tension. However, this wasn't the end of the challenges. Two individuals demanded money, claiming disruption to the neighborhood. Surprisingly, the production team paid them what they wanted seven grand and the trouble ceased. This gritty experience exemplifies the dedication to capturing authentic scenes, even in challenging circumstances. The commitment to realism extended to the dance sequences, such as the one between Tony and Stephanie set to Boz Skagg's loadout. Despite the initial choice being a hit song at the time, Skaggs' management refused permission for its use in the film. This decision cost Skaggs an estimated $5 million in royalties. Composer David Shire had to create a new piece matching the tempo of the original dance sequence, showcasing the meticulous efforts to maintain the film's integrity. Adding a personal touch to the film, John Travolta's sister, Anne Travolta, played a role as the pizza lady, while his mother, Helen Travolta, appeared as the woman for whom Tony gets paint. This familial involvement offers a glimpse into the close-knit connections within the production. In the end, Saturday Night Fever wasn't just a movie, it was an immersive journey into the challenges of capturing the vibrancy of disco culture in the late 70s. seconds. From neighborhood tensions to musical copyright issues, the film's production was as dynamic and unpredictable as the dance moves it showcased ultimately contributing to its enduring legacy. When filming commenced for the 1977 movie Saturday Night Fever, concerns arose about Karen Lynn Gorney's suitability for the role. Some crew members questioned her age and doubted her dancing abilities due to injuries sustained in a past motorcycle accident. Meanwhile, an interesting dynamic unfolded between John Travolta and director John Badham. Travolta, surprised by Badham's limited knowledge of New York, took it upon himself to familiarize the director with the city, showcasing both Manhattan and Brooklyn. As an intriguing side note, in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, the term Manero, meaning cool, is widely used. Some link it to the film's lead character, Tony Manero, but it's merely a coincidence. The slang has a historical context, referring to something considered easy to use or transport. These behind-the-scenes details offer a glimpse into the challenges and collaborations that shaped the iconic 1977 movie Saturday Night Fever, bringing forth a mix of doubts, camaraderie, and unexpected connections. More than 40% of the cast of the iconic 1977 movie Saturday Night Fever made their feature debuts, marking a significant chapter in their careers. Donna Pescal, for instance, auditioned for the role of Annette six times before finally securing it at 22. Her relief at not having to work at Bloomingdale's during Christmas was palpable. A list of debutants includes names like Joseph Colley, Shelley Bad, Denny Dillon, Fran Drescher, and others, highlighting the film's role in launching several successful careers. This diverse cast faced challenges beyond the audition room. Filming in certain neighborhoods sparked opposition, notably from a group of Hasidic Jews who attempted to disrupt the production. 
Their resistance even extended to trying to overturn one of the cars used in the film. This clash of interests adds a layer of intensity to the behind-the-scenes narrative, underscoring the hurdles faced during the making of Saturday Night Fever. These lesser-known details shed light on the vibrant mix of talent and challenges that define the film's production. From the persistence of auditioning to clashes with local communities, the journey to bring Saturday Night Fever to the big screen was as dynamic as the disco culture it aimed to capture a proof that success is often born from overcoming unexpected obstacles. The making of the 1977 movie Saturday Night Fever involved unique behind-the-scenes elements that contributed to its iconic status. Notably, director John Badham drew inspiration for the film's disco's multicolored lighted dance floor from a dining experience at the club in Birmingham, Ow. This establishment featured a similar floor, influencing the vibrant atmosphere captured in the movie's dance sequences. John Travolta, the lead actor, initially danced to tunes by Stevie Wonder and Boz Skaggs before the Bee Gees became involved. According to Travolta, the film's soundtrack wasn't initially linked to the Bee Gees, highlighting the dynamic musical choices made during production. Unlike many films, Saturday Night Fever relied on practical effects. The smoke rising from the dance floor wasn't from dry ice or a smoke machine, but a mix of burning tar and automobile tires. Bill Ward, the film's sole gaffer, explained that this unconventional choice created intense heat and smoke, necessitating the provision of oxygen for John Travolta at one point. The filmmakers spared no expense, investing $15,000 to incorporate pulsating lights into the dance floor, enhancing the electrifying visual experience. The club's transformation, with walls covered in aluminum foil and Christmas lights, impressed even the venue's owner upon viewing the dailies. These production details showcase the dedication to authenticity in capturing the disco culture of the late 70s seconds. From unique lighting choices to unconventional smoke effects, Saturday Night Fever's behind-the-scenes efforts contributed to its enduring legacy as a cinematic classic. As we bid adieu to the dazzling disco era of Saturday Night Fever, let the rhythm of nostalgia linger in the corridors of your memory. Like a time capsule, this cinematic gem from 1977 has etched its mark on the cultural dance floor, leaving behind a legacy that transcends the silver screen. Now, as you've journeyed through the glitzy streets of Brooklyn with Tony Manero and swayed to the beat of the Bee Gees, take a moment to unravel the threads that connect you to this iconic tale. Perhaps it's the pulsating soundtrack that resonates with the rhythm of your own life, or the electric dance moves that sparked a fire on the dance floor of your own existence. Saturday Night Fever is more than a movie. It's a reflection of the universal yearning for self-discovery and the pursuit of dreams. So, dear reader, viewer, let the spirit of Tony's hustle and the disco ball's glitter prompt you to revisit the dance floor of your own aspirations. In the comments section below, share the echoes of Saturday Night Fever in your life. What memories does it invoke? What personal stories does it stir? Let's weave a collective tapestry of experiences where your narratives join the dance of countless others who have been moved by the rhythm of this cinematic masterpiece. Thank you for joining us on this journey down the illuminated streets of disco and self-discovery. Your stories make this dance floor vibrant and your reflections add depth to the legacy of Saturday Night Fever. Until the next time we groove through the annals of cinema, keep dancing to your unique beat.